Hello my peacocks, welcome to part two of Tim. God, you've made it this far so long. So what we're gonna be doing today is drawing. I figured for our peacock play, what not a better way to get in the summer spirit and still be doing an activity you might be doing at school, because I know a lot of us are missing our friends at school and being at school, seeing our teachers. I know it's just, it's really hard to adjust. So what not a perfect way than to draw. So I'm gonna give you just a few minutes to grab any kind of paper. I'm just using this kind of paper pad. Um, any paper works, you can even use the margins of old homework or coloring sheets or even a newspaper would be very fun. Any kind of paper that you can find will work, okay? And then any kind of drawing or coloring utensils you wanna use. I have a highlighter, which is super duper fun. You can have a pencil, any kind of pen, or a just thick black marker. So anything works. So I'm gonna give you a few seconds, pause right here if you need to, and then I will see you in the next clip to draw. I love, so the first thing that we are gonna be drawing is a fish, okay? We're gonna take little segments and learn different things to draw so we can really focus on what thing we decide. So again, I'm gonna be taking my big black markers so we can all see what I'm doing, and I'm gonna try and turn so you can see me the best. Okay, it's kind of tricky, but we'll, do, we'll see what we can do. So what I'm gonna do is start with a teardrop kind of shape, okay? You know, a teardrop is like this where it's pointing her at one side, so if you need to tip your paper up this way to draw it, that works too, and then turn it. That's always kind of a good trick. So we're gonna do that, and then the rounder part is gonna be kind of the head of our fish, or the face, and then the pointy part is going to be the back of them. So we're gonna start off on our pointy part, and we're gonna make their fins, okay? They usually have two fins protruding outwards, so we're gonna draw those. And all fishes, the fishies are different, so it doesn't matter if you feel like yours doesn't look super realistic, because there's the crazy kinds of fishes out there, and you never know what you're gonna find, especially in Hawaii, because that's our theme. Hawaii has the coolest fishies ever. <laughs> um, so you see, there's my two little fins. Again, I kind of made them teardrop shaped. Almost, they almost look like leaves in a way. Um, so yeah, any kind of thing you're feeling, it can be even like circles or stars. I mean, this is your fish that you're making. It doesn't have to be super realistic. <laughs> okay, so we do that. And then I'm gonna start on our top part. And I'm gonna start my marker going from their face. Remember we talked about how that's their face right there? And go backwards. So it's gonna arch up and then connect to the back. Okay, these are gonna be its other fins. Fishes have lots and lots of fins. And I'm just gonna repeat that on the bottom. See, there you go, very, very cool. And then next we get to do its face. So you can decide if you want this fish, you can be looking down on it or you can be looking at the side of it. Again, totally up to you. I'm gonna make it look at the side of it so I can draw an eye right there. You should just do dots, super simple. And then I like to draw a little half smile because I always like to think that fishies are smiling at you. Again, it's totally up to you. So there's my little fishy. And then I am just going to draw little squiggly lines to look like his scales. So there you go, little fishy. And then I'm gonna take, I have a pink highlighter here because I love the color pink. And I'm gonna go ahead and color my little fishy all in. So, there you have it. Again, Hawaii has some of the coolest fishies ever. If you have a moment or someone in your family will let you, you can look up fishies from Hawaii and they have, they're beautiful. There's one that looks like a rainbow with all different colors. There's um, a puffer fish, which blows up and it kind of looks like a beach ball. Or there's one that's really, really small. There's one that's super duper big. You never know. So here's my little pink fish. I think we should name him. What do you think? Should we name him? Let's think. What should we name our little fishy? What about little Miss Caitlin? That could be kind of fun. All right, I'm gonna write little Miss Caitlin. That's what my fishy's gonna be named. And there you go. <laughs> there is my little fishy. And then we are gonna draw one more thing and that is gonna be all we're gonna draw today. So if you have a moment, you can show your mom, or your dad, sister, or brother, grandma, or grandpa, show them your super duper cool fish that you drew. All right, and since I figured that we're talking about fish, it was only fitting to show you a few, okay? So this is called the Lagoon Trigger Fish, and it's native to Hawaii, and it's even called the Picasso Fish because it is so colorful like the painter.
All right, the last fish we are going to talk about today is the parrot fish. Again, this is also in Hawaii, and then this one loves to live in these super pretty coral reefs. All right, enough talking about our fishies, but it's kind of silly I should say that because next we're going to be drawing a habitat that some fishies like to live in. Like I was talking about with the parrot fish, which is the picture I just showed you, that fishie likes to live in the coral reefs. So that's what we're going to draw today. Coral reefs are actually super duper pretty and they're often really colorful. Recently with kind of how everything is going, there's a little bit of pollution, so some of them are losing their color, but today I want to draw a super duper colorful coral reef. So I'm actually going to draw my coral reef around my Little Miss Caitlin fishy. So if you want to do that, you can as well. I only have three colors, but that works just good. I have a blue pen, a red, and then I have a pink. And drawing these coral reefs is super duper easy. It's probably one of the easier things that you can draw. All right, again, I'm gonna kind of turn so you can see me. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna start with my pink. And what you're doing is you're drawing squiggly lines from your floor, okay? So I'm gonna draw a line here to kind of signify that that's my ocean floor. Hold on, I'm gonna do darker color so you can see a little bit better. Again, I'm gonna use my black marker. So go ahead and draw a line at the bottom and that's gonna be your ocean floor, kind of like how you have hardwood floors or carpet or whatever in your house, it's your floor. And draw those squiggly lines up. All right, again, we're gonna continue those squiggly lines. And then that's gonna be your little coral reef. Another way that you can do them is to have a smaller little base and only do them out of there, but kind of make them go all over the place like a little plant web. So that's super fun too. And then you can kind of extend your little area over. So I'm gonna do one over here really, really quickly. All right, super fun. So there you go, it's a little bit of coral reef. And then I'm going to take an additional color. I'm gonna use my blue and kind of draw some accents and make it a little bit more colorful. So I'm gonna do that in between, give it some depth, make it like a little bit more realistic. And then after this, I'm gonna show you some pictures of the coral reef so you can see what our inspiration is and then maybe critique your picture to look a little bit more and be a little bit more inspired. So there you go, there is Little Miss Caitlin's habitat. It's called the coral reef. And like I just said, I will be talking about it in just a minute. All right, here's a perfect example of a coral reef. This one is super pretty and vibrant. And then here's another example with some little fishies. And there you can see a really fun zebra fish. If you've seen the movie Finding Nemo, you will have seen one. All right, my lovelies, now it's time for some dancing. So put on your ballet shoes if you want, or you can go barefoot because we are in Hawaii. And we're just going to do a little bit of review just super duper quickly and then some combinations and we'll be done for today. All right, my darlings, we are ready for some ballet. So what we're gonna do is do a little bit of review. We're gonna do some of our plies, review our positions, and then get on to our combinations. Okay, so what I want us to do first is obviously our plies. So we're just gonna do our first position, hands on our hips this time, and we are going to do four. Ready, begin. One, up, two, up, three, up, four, up. Good job, and we're gonna open to our second, still hands on our hips, begin. One, up, two, Three, up, four, up. Good job, guys. And then lastly, we're gonna do it in fifth, okay? Usually we don't do third or fourth position because it can kind of hurt your knees. So let's get straight to fifth. Begin. One, up, two, up, three, up, four, up. Good job, guys. You're doing awesome today. All right, let's go ahead and go over what our positions are, all five of them. So I'm going to call it a position Count to three, and then I want you to do it with me, okay? Let's start with our first position, ready? One, two, three. First position should be your feet open to a little V, and then your arms will be holding a beach ball. Good job, guys. Next, we have second position, again. One, two, three. Second position should be your feet out, and your arms will be kind of in a line. Here's our line, but we want to curve those arms. Remember, like I always say, Pretty like a ballerina. And then third position, again. One, two, three. The third position is a weird one. And what does Miss Kelly always say? 
feet in a T, arms in an L, good job guys. And then for fourth, what do we do? One, two, three. You are just going to open that foot out. So there should be a little bit of separation of space. And then your arms, we're going to L, and you're going to cross them to what kind of looks like an S if that helps you remember. And then after that we have fifth, what do we do? One, two, three. For fifth, we just bring in our leg that was in fourth together, and you're almost here in an S, and now bring it up to an O. Good job, guys. You are doing fabulous. All right, now let's do some combinations. All right, and that for our first combination of the day, when you're spelling out the word fish. Very fitting, because we just learned how to draw fishies. First of all, we need to start out in our fourth position, okay? Since fish starts with an F, we're going to start with our fourth position with arms ready to keep my feet, but I know you know what you're doing. Fourth, and then for I in the fish, I want you to bring that leg in. So you're going to point your toe and then bring that leg in. Good. And then for S, I want you to bring your S arms up. And then for H, it's going to be standing for hands. Hands open to close, just very gracefully, okay? Again, fourth, in, S, up, arms, open. And after the arms I'm doing is I'm here my O, bringing it down, and then I'm turning to flutter out and in. Let's do it two more times, okay? Back and forth. Leg to be in, S up, hands open, flip together. Last time, fourth position, leg in, S up, hands open, flip, flutter. Lovely, my darlings. Let's do one more. All right, my lovelies, for our last combination of the day, this is our last little dance move. We're going to be spelling out coral. Again, we drew it, so I figured it's only fitting for us to spell it out. So for C, we're going to start with our Shanjama. This is a move that we've done a few other times. So remember, you're starting with your fifth position. Hopefully, you're not wearing a super duper long skirt or dress. This will be a little bit easier for you. And then you're going to jump in the air and switch your feet again. Up, Shanjama. So that's our, F, our C, sorry. And then for our O, we just finished going Shanjama. And then just bring your arms over like a rainbow. So go over. And then for our R, I want you to do a rond de jambe. I'm not really sure if we've done this before. I think my advanced girls have. But what you're going to do is you're going to take your foot and then draw a half circle on the ground. So we're going to go rond de jambe. Other side, rond de jambe. So again, just need a little half circle. Okay? So we go Shanjma over Rod Jam. Good. And then you go step to go arabesque. And then go step, step, leap. Okay, so I'm good. Not too hard, but a lot to remember. Okay, so we're going to do this a few times because this one's a little bit more advanced. And I think you got it. You ready? Alright, good. Alright, first we have Shanjma. Over, then go rond de jambe, good. Step, go your best, and then you can go step, step to go your leap. Good job, guys. Right, for the last time, so I want all of your effort, I want 100% make this your best one yet. All right, let's begin. Deep breath. All right. Shantma. Over. Rond de jambe, step, arabesque, step, step, leap. All right, y'all did awesome today. All right, bye my lovelies. I hope you had the best day today on our little Hawaiian adventure. Hopefully you enjoyed our coloring little segment. I know that was so much fun to draw our fishies and our coral wreath. Um, that's a perfect little thing you can make. Maybe you make a card for someone and send it to them who has been quarantining by themselves or wait and give it to your teacher or friend when you finally get to go back to school to see them. I had tons of fun today. I'm really hoping that you did too on our little fishy learning and our coral reef learning. And I cannot wait to see you next week.